Marriage is a third rite of passage among the Bukusu, coming after the celebration of birth and circumcision. It is significant because it ensures continuity of the tribe, thus celebrated with a lot of vigor. It dates back to the days of Muhale, Mundu, Samba Sambarani Nguni, the fathers of the Bukusu people. Just like any other rite, it is norm governed. Do the norms still apply today? Hale, umana muku swaba nende lirak. Kendo mende kwa kamala kwa rude kubo. The laws we had have been abandoned, which is wrong. A ripe girl would attract potential suitors. They came literally with a handle, asking for the jembe, referring to a girl. This was done by elders, not the way it is done nowadays where a man strolling spots a girl, whistles at her or fall her to the stream. Then it was an abomination and one would be heftily fined for whistling at a girl. Qualities of a good wife were identified by women. They would spy on her when she went to draw water from the river. Will she wash the water barrel? Will she be eavesdropping on men around? Such manners. If she cleans the barrel before fetching water, the mother-in-law will approve of her. For the man, after elders have uh, brought you a wife, you are to stay focused on her. No side chicks. A wife was to perform house chores, not going to markets, no hovering around. Furthermore, the wife was praised by women for her calves. They would sing, Dumbu, Dumbu, Yomwana, Wefwe. That is the sizable calves of our daughter, a virgin girl, well behaved. She stayed indoors for a certain period of time, during which her aunts schooled her in matters marriage and sexuality. Her husband, on the other side, was schooled by uncles over the same and other regulations among them never to warm himself any longer at his mother's fireplace. Let your wife make you a fire to warm yourself. Your mother became your mother-in-law. Dowry payment was very interesting in those days. There was no specific number of cattle prescribed for dowry payment. However, it had a formula. We then would flock a herd of cattle to her home. We had no specific number of cows. Instead, we would look for a man with physical prowess and lead him to a herd of cattle where they were grazing. He then would throw a piece of stick, the length of a half walking stick. After brandishing it severally, he would let it fly with all his might. Where it landed drew the boundary, all the cows on his side from the stick became bride price. Marriage was respected, no adultery unlike today a man goes to the market, bumps into a strange woman, they have sex. A woman goes to the river, goes behind a bush with another man. Sad. It was a taboo. Adulterers were made to lie in a fresh sheepskin. This was to make them repent and swear to abstain from their malpractice. Whoever broke the vow invited misery upon themselves. <laughs>
Thanks for watching Culture Hub TV. More episodes coming up. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video with your friends.